Hi guys, so today we're in Kinsale, County Cork and this is St Molto's Church and Graveyard just down all along there is Kinsale, beautiful Kinsale but we've had to come this way because there's actually a tour and the caretaker is also cutting the grass so as you can see we have our first mausoleum here or crypt and uh, this one is completely covered in ivy look at those rails yeah this one is quite unique it has a hole right through the top of it That. to the memory of Joseph Harsford 1878 so quite unusual there but let's keep going this is Reverend Thomas Greer 1901, age 65, and you can see those buildings there. The whole town is um, all different colours. All the buildings are different colours. Wow, look at this one. We have an anchor and a cross. Mary Ann. Field. Is that the name? Yeah, our dear mother, Mary Ann Field. Aged 43, 1898. Look at that. We have ivy around it as well. That's beautiful. And take a look at the rails. Now, I have just noticed, what is that? It looks like some kind of a bone on top of that tomb. Wow, look at this one, the rails again. No name there that I can see. And we have even more crypts all around us. Another one here. Looks like the name is William. 1872, I think. And these mausoleums are, for the most, completely bricked up. But uh, you have to be very careful because it's on a complete slant. And you don't want to be falling down there. It says E. Bishop. Just there. That to me, I thought it was actually like um, iron. James McComsky of Pell Isle of Man, who died 1895, aged 61. So James McComsky, an unusual name. The memory of the just is blessed. So this is the, the back of the mausoleum. And the... Uh, We've even actually a couple of headstones just in here. That 
That one looks like it's iron as well for some reason. We won't be able to get in there because it's just completely surrounded by brambles. So as I said, that's the, the back there of that mausoleum. And you can see we have several of these crypts around and some beautiful headstones as well. Another one here. Now there is a hole there, so I might just pause the video and have a look. There guys, there's actually human remains there. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. focus complete skeleton skulls bones Rib cage, the whole lot there. <sighs> just from that little hole trying to peep in. So it's just in there, there's a hole. And we can see full skeletal remains in there. I'm kind of out of breath now because I was trying to get a look in. There's the wall of it. Look at these. by Mrs. John Murphy and the date down at the bottom to the memory of um, erected by Mrs. John Murphy and it says something at the bottom to the memory of as a tribute of parental affection to the memory of his beloved children Anne, aged 11 months, and Anna Maria down at the bottom. So it must be, sorry, it's Mr. John Murphy. But just look at that, those beautiful little cherubs. And I wonder, is there three small children underneath? Now it has started to rain. Um, it was given some showers, but we'll keep going. Look at that, the dove, some beautiful flowers, absolutely gorgeous. Loving memory of Richard Newman, who died April 20th, 1908, aged, I think that's 66, and his wife Annie, 1928, aged 80, and his children. We have a nine week old, Michael, he died in 1875. We have Robert, aged just 11 months, 1877. John Robert, 1887, 10 months. Eleanor, 14 years, 1887, those are all the same year. Johanna, 1890, age 21. William, 1910, 31. John Robert, 1918, 28 years. Benjamin, aged 47, 1919. Mary Ann, 1942, aged 69. And there's a Sarah Penrose age 65, 1948, and Richard Newman, 1951, aged 80. So a lot of his, his children are there. So the day is changing drastically here. So we're going to try and get as much done, and there is the wind. That looks like a flower on this one. Here lie at the body of... Uh, Beale, Mr. Amos. Amos Beale, it looks like, who died or who departed this life, 1792, age 62. And look at that for beautiful designs, like a flower. 
Now I don't know what this is. This is obviously a crypt as well. And it's completely broken away. A lot of stones and stuff in there. It's like the whole thing has collapsed. It just goes to show how deep those go down. We have another structure actually just up there quite similar. We have another one here and we keep going up along. I'm just mindful that there is a tour going on and as I said the caretaker cutting the lawns. Some more of these crypts. This is like the land of crypts or land of mausoleums. I've never seen anything quite like it. Joseph Wade it looks like 1832 mausoleum here and as you can see it's kind of built up on these hills and I don't know what you can see already just there there's a line of those crypts but unfortunately the man cutting the lawn is down there so we'll have a look in a few minutes another crypt another one here and another one here as I said Kinsale just below us there and those beautiful coloured houses now unfortunately we've had a quick look here and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of um, writing left on those crypts or mausoleums. Now, George is here. George Arnop, who died 15th of January 1898, age 58, and his wife Mary. January 1911, age 69, and children. George was washed... Sorry, George, who was washed overboard off the SS Kate of Whitby and drowned in the Bay of Biscay, the 20th of May, 1890, aged 28. Daniel, 1879, aged 2. Elizabeth, 1882, aged 7. Lawrence, 1895, aged 12. Pierce died on the SS Iser at Barry Dock, the 3rd of January, 1904, aged 31. Dora, 1922, aged 52. Annie, 1928, aged 62. Her husband, William Dent, killed in Barry Dock, the 6th of August, 1914, aged 49. Reuben Newman, 1930, aged 49 years. His child, George, 1913, 10 and a half months. And George Waters died in Adelaide Hospital, Dublin. 1931, age 63, and there's a catching Arnop, died 27th of May, 1933, age 69. And just below then we have Charles Waters. He was 15 when he passed in 1925, I think it is, and William Arnop, 1940, age 69, and his wife, George, sorry, wife, Mary, wife of George, 80 years in 1948. So we'll have to see if we can find anything about George Arnop and all those children. Beautiful designs on this one. This is Arnop as well. William Arnop, 1891, age 71, and also his granddaughter, Annie. She was only 13 and a half when she died in 1895, and his wife, Anne, 1900s, aged 82, and also his son, Lawrence the 1900s aged 38 and in fact Anne died in February and Lawrence followed in March yeah look at this one this is gorgeous and these look like they are I don't know what sort of stone that is I keep thinking that they look like metal this is in memory of James O'Brien, I think it is, um, erected by his 
sister-in-law, is it? Son-in-law. Or son-in-law, sorry. And the date then... Well, it says also his children, actually. They died in their... Infancy. So his children died in infancy. But I don't see a date, and it, it could be gone right down under the ground there, I suppose. There's another crypt here, completely covered in ivy. And uh, that there would have been the entrance into it. And so as I said, it's quite hard to get around because it's kind of all on slopes. Another crypt just there. Now, and unfortunately, if there is writing on these, they're all up on top and we've no way of reading them then unless we can find them on Find a Grave, but I don't think we will be able to unless to have um, an ID source. We've more of the crypts there. This beautiful one here, absolutely gorgeous. And this was actually a crypt as well. You can see here, wrote on the ground, entrance. So that would have been the entrance into that there. Some beautiful designs on top. Um, erected by, looks like Benjamin McDaniel. Um, and the rest I cannot read, unfortunately. And then more of those crypts and vaults. And again, any writing is just there on top. So it's kind of a pity that it's done that way because we just can't read them. And look at the entrance for this one. How cool is that? And another one just here. This one here. And then a row of them. All along, right down there where that man is uh, cutting the grass. So we have an interesting grave here. And this is for Margaret Mackenzie Shineman. December 1888, 7th May 1915. Now, if you can read it here, it says, an unknown victim woman of the Lusitania, 7th of May 1915. Margaret was unknown for over a hundred years. Margaret Scheinman, Nee Mackenzie, was in an unmarked grave at St Maltose's graveyard in Kinsale for over a hundred years. It was down to a cruel twist of fate that Mr and Ms Scheinman were on an ill-fated Lusitania, which sank with the loss of 1,198 lives, as they were originally booked to travel on another liner to return to her native Scotland on her honeymoon. On the afternoon of the 7th of May, a German U-boat torpedoed Lusitania, 18 kilometres off the southern coast of Ireland, inside the declared war zone. A second internal explosion caused her to sink in 18 minutes, killing 1,198 passengers and crew. The German government justified treating Lusitania as a naval vessel because she was carrying 173 tonnes of war munitions and ammunition making her a legitimate military target, 
and he argued that British merchant ships had violated the cruiser rules from the very beginning of the war. However, the ship was not armed for battle and was carrying hundreds of civilian passengers and the British government accused the Germans of breaching the cruiser rules. The sinking caused a storm of protest in the United States because 128 American citizens were among the dead. The sinking shifted public opinion in the United States against Germany and was one of the factors in the declaration of war nearly two years later. After the First World War, successive British governments maintained that there was no munitions on board Lusitania and the Germans were not justified in treating the ship as a naval vessel. In 1982, the head of the Foreign Office's American Department finally admitted that there is a large amount of ammunition in the wreck, some of which is highly dangerous and poses a safety risk to salvage teams. Just beside Margaret, we have George Graddock and Richard Chamberlain. And these are also victims of the Lusitania. And it's wrote there. 7th of May, 1915. They don't seem to have a marker. But um, as I said, Margaret was unknown for a long, long time. I've just spotted up here. T Knox, private T Knox, Connacht Rangers, 1914. And I'm just giving you a look in here at the actual entrance. Right, so you'll have to excuse the sound of the lawnmower. But I want to walk you down along here. To just give you an idea of all of those crypts and vaults. So many of them. the sun back out again and that's one and that's the, the kind of the, the hill I was talking about the slope but it kind of walks you right around it's really really nice walks you right around the church it's even more crypts and vaults it's crazy I've never seen um, one quite like it newer section just up there but look at this that beautiful red kind of a stone it's just gorgeous something out there Lydia I think Nothing on this side. Some tombs. Just get a look at the, the green and the pink and the blue. Such vibrant colours here in Kinsale. Another crypt. Some beautiful rails there. 
Absolutely beautiful. Wow. And yet, another one just there. I don't think I've seen a graveyard, um, the one in Killogy down in Killarney that Irish Eyes did, had loads of them, loads of vaults and of course we were able to take a closer look inside them but this is different, it's just, you know, there's just so many of them, They're almost on top of each other then as well, but uh, it's kind of taken us the bones of three hours in, fairly heavy traffic to kind of get here but it's another one ticked off the, the bucket list I've had for a while. And again, any information I find, I will put either in the description box or photos or anything, I will pop them over the video and edit. And some headstones we just couldn't get to at all. And then some, of course, we just couldn't read, which is a pity. But look at that blue sky, absolutely stunning. And then even more mausoleums and crypts down there. Loving memory of Frances Catron, wife of George Newman Dunn, it looks like. And born in 1840 maybe 1914 or so there for his passing i don't think we'll be able to read this one looks like martha don't esquire jp we won't be able to read that either unfortunately right so guys we'll have to leave it there um the man is cutting right where i wanted to bring you out of So for now, take care, God bless, and I've just spotted this one, furlong possibly, can't see a date, but for now, take care, God bless, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Avis Williamson Dorman, age 71, 1920. Jane Diana Hunt Dorman, 1933. In memory of Brig Brigadier Edward Mungo Dorman, CBDSOMC, died April 1967, and his wife, Georgia Mabel, died February 1970, buried at Arborfield. I am with you always, even unto the end and that is the last of all the crypts and the mausoleums here in the Church of Ireland St Multo's Church okay guys talk to you soon God bless